If you've stumbled upon this video, you probably are wondering if you owe taxes on your mineral rights. We're gonna go over just a couple of the situations on when that can happen, and then also give you an approximation of how much that might be and then how to estimate that. This isn't gonna go into great detail, that will be a future video, but just to give you a baseline of when that might happen and if you should be worried about it or not. Most states have it to where if you own minerals and they are not producing, you don't owe any taxes on those minerals. So for example, you know if they're producing or not producing by if you're receiving royalty checks each month or each year. Or if you know that there's wells drilled on the acreage, that would be considered a producing acreage position and you likely owe some type of tax on the stuff that is being produced. Now, there's a couple different types of taxes that you might owe. Some states, such as Texas, you'll owe something called an ad valorem tax, which is kind of like your property taxes on your house that you owe each year. It's a certain interest that the county is charging to your property. It's usually about 1% or 2% of your royalties that you're receiving is about the scale that it normally is, but it's not actually assessed on how much you're making from the well. It's assessed based on the value set on January 1st using a certain type of criteria. It's estimating how much future revenue that well will make in its lifetime. And that is the value that they're assessing. When you get that little statement, it says that that's the value assessed is the future royalties all summed together and the present value of it today, you owe a certain amount of tax on that present value. The same way that you owe a certain amount of tax to the county for your appraised home value, right? That's how much you could sell it for today, not necessarily how much you would rent it for today. You know, that makes sense. So that's what the ad valorem tax would be. That's due yearly. You can protest it. It's best to try to fight it before the protest hearing date. That's a completely different topic, but that's one type of tax. The next type of tax that you might see usually is something that you don't have to worry about. It's taken care of for you. And that is your severance tax. Now, almost every single state has this. The ones that I work with, at least all of them do. Texas, Oklahoma, New Mexico, North Dakota, Louisiana, they all have severance tax. That's most similar to a sales tax. So every transaction that happens, you owe a percentage of to the state. So when I say transaction, that's when a barrel of oil is sold and you receive royalty for that barrel of oil, you'll have to pay a certain amount to the state before you get that money. That's usually taken care of by the operator for you. If you get your little royalty check or look on Energy Link, whatever the operator's using to detail that out to you, you'll see something that says like SEV, which is severance tax, usually on a fee or withheld or something that comes out of your royalty. So you have like gross royalties, things that come out of it, and then net royalties, usually gross and net owners, all those things. You'll see that out of your statement and it comes out before you even get a check. So you don't have to worry about it, but just know that it is a tax that is being paid to the state because you have a producing wealth and it's income to the state. Another type of tax that you are probably more familiar with is your income tax that you will owe on royalties you're receiving. This is considered more of a personal tax. Do talk to your CPA. I am not a CPA. I just come across a lot of these taxes, so I happen to know it, so I'm going to share it. But I am not a CPA. Do consult a CPA that's familiar with oil and gas if you have significant income coming from oil and gas, because there are certain tax breaks and ways to file things that an oil and gas specific CPA might know better than one who has never seen it before. If you're a mineral owner in Northern California, your CPA in Northern California might not have ever seen the taxes producing well. Make sure you know that your CPA knows what to do with this information. So that said, you will owe income tax on the royalties you're receiving because it's considered miscellaneous income. And typically the person who is paying you those royalties will ask for a W-9. Yeah, they'll ask for a W-9 so that they know how much to withhold for you. And then you'll receive like a 1099 at the end of the year that will say how much they withheld and yada yada. This is getting outside of my expertise, but I'm just letting you know that, that is your federal income tax. Now, some states also have a state income tax, which will also be levied. If you don't file a W-9 with the company that's paying you, they'll assume the maximum. And so they'll usually take out like 35% or something. It kind of depends on the state, all those situations, but make sure your W-9 is sent in and that should make sure that you're handled appropriately. The fourth type, four, I think we're on four. The fourth type of tax that you might come across as a mineral owner is a capital gains tax. This only happens if you sell 
your minerals as of right now, as of 2022, December, as of December 2022. And I believe this is accurate through 2023. If you sell your minerals, you will have to pay tax on the amount that you sold. It's considered a real estate property. So it's like if you owned an extra house and you sold that extra house, you'd be taxed in a similar way. It is considered a capital gains, any amount that you make on that minus any amount that you invested. Now, if you bought your minerals, that's the amount you invested. If you inherited your minerals, then you get into things like stepped up basis and cost basis and whatnot. And I do have another video on that that I will link. But the difference between what you got it for and what you sold it for is the capital gains. If it's less than a certain amount of time, it's short term. If it's more than a certain amount of time, it's long term. And they have two different rates that you have to pay. One is higher. The short term is higher than the long term. So that is a capital gains tax. And there's different programs where like you can roll over that amount into another investment. What's the name of the exchange? It's called some type of capital exchange. So those are the main types of taxes that you're going to come across as a mineral owner. If none of those situations apply to you, you should not owe taxes. Let me know if you have any questions on this. I am a petroleum engineer. I do specialize in oil and gas valuations and appraisals and knowing the taxes just is part of knowing the value of something. So that's just something I know. But let me know if you have any questions. Please email me. My email is below and my phone number is on my website. I am the owner of Pecan Tree Oil and Gas. Thank you for watching. Bye.